Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to talk about XAML schemas and namespace declarations. So uh, up to now, we've kind of avoided all of this ugly code here at the very top of our main page.xaml. Take a moment to look that over, and I want to remind you of some things that we said at the very outset when we began talking about XAML. We said that XAML is actually just a flavor of XML, or rather, that XAML uses XML to implement its syntax. And then secondly, we said in order to use XML, or at least use it properly, you have to create schemas. And a schema is like a contract that both the producer of the XML and the consumer of the XML agree upon so that they can work together. So if that's the case, then where do we find the schema for XAML, for the page that we're currently working on? Well, actually, you might have guessed it, that's lines number three through seven specifically here at the very top of our file. All right, there are actually five schemas that the main page.xaml adheres to. It promises that it will follow the rules set forth in those schemas. Now, uh, you can see that not only do we define the schema itself, but we give the schema a namespace. And a namespace is just like we would use in a C-sharp namespace. So we say that, for example, if you take a look at this example that I have right here, I'm saying that for this particular attribute of, the, of this object, this attribute is defined in the namespace associated with the letter X, and that adheres to a schema defined here at this URL. Okay, so the namespace, it allows us to say that a given element or a given attribute is defined at a given, uh, at a given uh, schema location. And uh, before I forget, uh, just so you know, uh, you won't see this in the code that you create or that's automatically generated for you. I added this because this is the way that you used to have to reference uh, the name attribute of any control. You don't have to do that anymore because I think they changed the schema. And so now the name attribute is actually part of the default schema, not part of this schema that defines the rules of XAML in general. Okay, just wanted to make that clear. Now that means that everything else in this document, everything that doesn't have any prefix in front of it, whether it be the X, the local, the D, the MC, and so on, that means that it adheres to this default namespace that's defined here at the very top. So while I have that copied to my clipboard, I'll just uh, actually just control C, copy it, and then let me open up uh, a new Internet Explorer and paste it in and try to see what that schema looks like. Wait a second, I got a 404 error. Yeah, you know, actually the um, schemas are not really defined here in the sense that you can go out and you can look at the schemas. Uh, it's more of just uh, a unique place that just like namespaces are unique names just intended to disambiguate the same thing is true with these schemas you can't go out and look at them uh, but Microsoft when they implemented their software both Visual Studio and Blend and the XAML parser and compiler uh, they adhere to these these unwritten rules, or they might be written somewhere, but we can't get to them, at least not from this particular URL. In fact, it's not really even a URL, it's more of a URI, a Uniform Resource Indicator, that's used as a namespace, in a sense, to define schemas that we can use in our document, okay? I realize that that's kind of confusing, but there's really just one main takeaway of all of this, and that is this, that uh, everything in our document does follow a namespace, or rather a schema, an XML schema that's defined in one of these places. Now you might wonder what each of these schemas are used for. For example, what's really the difference between this topmost schema and the second schema? Well, the difference is really subtle, but essentially this schema defines uh, the uh, all of the, the UI elements. So the grid view, the button, and all their attrib attributes are defined in the namespace um, that uh, adheres to the schema here at this location, okay, this URI. Whereas just all of the rules for XAML in general are, are defined here at this schema, okay? Next up, you see that we have a local namespace 
And this is actually not a schema per se, it's actually a namespace, just like we would use a using statement so that we can reference classes. So say for example, I create a car class in my application. I would be able to reference it inside of my XAML because uh, as long as I prefix that with local colon car, I'd be able to reference it here in my uh, XAML document, okay? Now the last two are actually used by designer. So you can see that this actually says something about expression blend 2008. These are actually used to represent the design view that you see here. And that you would see if you open up Microsoft Blend like we'll do later on. Uh, however, if you look at this little uh, line number eight, it said that these are ignorable. So at, at runtime, we'll just ignore this namespace, we don't need it. Furthermore, the only reason why this ignorable uh, attribute exists is because of this namespace, this openxmlformance.org markup compatibility, okay? So yeah, you know, now that you kind of understand what these do, you can completely forget this. You'll, they have no actionable um, result uh, until we get a little bit deeper into our software development. Like we'll have to use these these namespace prefixes, some, especially the local one. We may have to create one when we get into working with data, when we get to working with um, custom classes that we've created that represent data, but that's a little bit of ways off. Just know that you should never ever modify this code here at the very top of, an, uh, of a XAML file unless you have a really good reason to do so and you almost never will, okay? The moral of the story is that yes, XAML is XML. These are the schemas that it adheres to. Don't make any changes to this, uh, but it's what makes everything kind of work together seamlessly between Visual Studio and uh, the parser and the compiler, okay? So that's about it uh, for talking about the syntax of XAML. That's all I have. But we're gonna move on to now actually using XAML for the design of our application and how do we lay out our application using XAML. We'll start that in the very next lesson. So we'll see you there. Thanks.